is my monthly reading wrap up so we're going to be going through all the books that I read in April and these are like my favourite favourite videos to film because I love talking about books especially the books that I have read so April I had a really good reading month but we'll get into that so before we do start please remember subscribe, follow me on Bookstagram and add me as a friend on Goodreads, the links are below. Also please remember to like and comment as it does help my videos get seen. Um, I am a really small creator obviously so that helps me a lot. So thank you. But So in April I read read 12 books, like fully, but I picked up 14 books, but like two of them were like DNFs. I mean, I think one of them you can't even really count as a DNF because I read one chapter, but I will go over that. Um, and I think I had such a good reading month because the books I, were, I was reading, I really enjoyed. I read a lot of like four star books, some five star books, so I like didn't get into a slump at all. And I think once I'm reading good books, like it makes me want to carry on reading. So I had a really good month. So let's just jump in to the first book, the first book that I read in April was How the King of Elfheim Learned like 
main character and the male main character walking through the woods like I couldn't remember the plot of the book I couldn't like really understand what they were what like the aim was it just I found it it was just too boring for me um so I gave up two stars and that is a series I won't be continuing unfortunately um that is just my opinion I know it's really popular I know a lot of people really like it but the too, too many of the elements were just same as like other fantasy books. I read, if you have seen my reading vlogs, I read the entire Chestnut Springs series this month. So we started with Flawless and this series is by Elsie Silver. It is a cowboy romance series. A Canadian cowboy romance series. And so popular and I understand why because this series is like become my favourite romance series ever. The first book Flawless follows Summer and Rhett and Rhett is a bull rider and Summer is Rhett's agent's daughter and she is tasked with like keeping him on track and away from this like bad boy persona that he's got and I gave this book four stars I literally I loved it so much I did do like I said an entire reading vlog on, on each book so that's in a playlist on my channel if you want to check those out but like I genuinely loved this I felt so giddy reading it all the time Summer had a really good backstory, like it had a lot of depth to it. Rare was, he was like perceived as a bad boy, but really he was a gentleman. The spicy scenes throughout it were written really well. It was just, it was so fun. It was like so fun. That's how I would describe this book. It was, it was fun and I loved it. So flawless, got four stars from me. I then went on and I picked up the second book in the series straight away because of how much I loved Flawless and that was Heartless. Again, Elsie Silver, another cowboy romance. This was my favourite book of the month. This is like my favourite romance book of all time. I love I love this book so much. This got five stars, more than five stars. It was written so well. This fe uh, feels, this follows Cade, who is Rhett's brother. And it also follows Willa, who is Summer's friend. And Cade is a single dad. And he basically needs a nanny for the summer so he can work on the ranch. Willow is hired and Willow, Willow is like a wild woman, I guess. She is just hilarious. Um, this is also an age gap romance. So I think Kate is 38 and Willow is 25. <laughs> and honestly, like the dynamic between these two is just so good. It's so fun. The tension was fun. Like it was hilarious. Like Willa, I literally love her so much, and Cade, the way he is written, I cannot think of a man who has been, like, written better than him. I am literally like my ovaries were glowing reading this book. recommend 
or something. She's also been on a few reality shows, but a few years ago she was the victim of like revenge porn, um, which kind of like dominated some of the headlines, some of like the showbiz headlines, I guess, in the UK um, back then, where a, a video of her was a video of her having sex with her ex-boyfriend was posted by him online and on OnlyFans without her consent and she actually went on obviously like she took him to court and stuff and she went on to win and he was jailed for it um, but this is basically just like her memoir so she starts by talking about how um, she started in like reality television on The Only Way Is Essex and how she got onto Love Island and the thing about her life is actually quite sad some of the things that happened like she lost her best friend to cancer then another one of her ex-boyfriends was killed in a car crash um, like a few months later and then obviously the whole thing with the revenge porn situation um, it is narrated by her and she is from Essex so I think you're not kind of from the UK and you're not used to the Essex accent that might be a bit of a struggle for you um, I mean it might not be I am like used to that accent having I'm because I'm English um, <laughs> is a an accent for sure like it's there and it's in your face but I like listening to memoirs when they're narrated by the person who, who writes them. Um, I gave this three stars. I thought it was, like, it was really interesting hearing about her life. She talks a lot about, like, spirituality and manifestation and the things that have helped her get through these times. She talks about some of the books that I have personally read, which helped me too, so it was interesting to hear how they had helped her. And obviously interesting, oh, sorry, to hear about all of the things that she has been through um what i will say is that some of the stuff is quite repetitive in some of the chapters it felt like she was saying she was describing a situation she'd already described so i think the book could have done with a little bit more editing um but overall it was you know it was powerful to hear about and i'm glad that she was able to tell her story for sure I then carried on with the Chestnut Springs series and I read Powerless. This is the third in the series and this follows Jasper and Sloane. So Jasper is kind of, he's like one of the brother's friends but he grew up with them. Um, their dad took him in when he was younger and like brought him up pretty much and then Sloan is there the brothers the Eaton brothers is their cousin and this Jasper is an ice hockey player so it's kind of a bit of a sports romance and Sloan is a dancer a ballerina and Sloan is basically originally it starts with her about to marry someone she has been arranged to marry and she runs away from that situation and her and Jasper go on a bit of like a road trip. I still gave this four stars but it was my least favourite in the series. I think it was my least favourite just because I didn't feel as much of like a connection to the characters as the other books um, and it also didn't give me as many like cowboy vibes um, but it was still really good like I said it was still four stars for me I also think it was a little bit too long um, Jasper however a beautiful man I love a bit of a dominating man and he was definitely a bit of a dark horse in this. Again I liked to like hear about some of the other characters we'd already read about. 
always like getting like, like sneak peeks into what they're up to as well as you carry on a series which we got during this the Eaton's dad Harvey is so funny again like I want him to get his own book or his own novella he's always coming out with like witty funny statements that are definitely like not appropriate in the context which is fun again the spikes is well written like Jasper's uh, Jasper's life is past has like some depth to it as well that we found out about so it is it's fun it's fun in like a some parts aren't fun but it's an enjoyable read like I'm still kicking my feet reading these books so that was powerless I did pick up one of the books that was in my like spring TBR um, and that was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson if you watched my TBR jar picks by spring reads this is the one, one of the books that I picked out of it it's super short however I read a one chapter of this book and I was just like I'm not going to force myself through this like I don't want to read it um, this isn't the kind of like literature that I enjoy reading anymore so I was like I'm not going to force why am I trying to like force myself to read something I don't want to read um, and so I read a chapter and then I was just like mm, nah I want to like enjoy the things that I'm reading so I think in like 2016, 2017, but all I want to read about at the moment is like either Mythical World or Hot Boys, fucking Hot Girls. So, I DNF'd this, if you, even if you can call it a DNF, I basically picked it up, read one chapter, put it back down and thought, So I might eventually get rid of that book. So yeah, your reminder that if you're not enjoying a book or you're not in the mood to read a book, you don't have to read the book. You can just put it away and read something else. And read a very popular book talk book, and this I buddy read this with my mum, which was cute and it was fun. And that was Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Again, we've read two books this month called. This is a YA fantasy book. And I'll just read you the back. And it says, The elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague. While those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of Ilya and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Baden Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. When she unsuspectedly saves one of Ilya's princes, Kai Azza, when she's thrown into the Persian trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elites' powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the princes that she's fighting feelings for will, if he discovers what Baden is, completely ordinary. I say Biden to begin with, like I don't know, it's Biden, I'm pretty sure. Um, so again, like I, to be honest, like I enjoyed this too, I gave it four stars. Um, it took me maybe like a hundred pages to get into, but after that, like I had a good time reading it. And that was probably held by the fact that I was buddy reading with my mum, so we would like FaceTime and text each other about what was happening, which made the, like, um, experience more fun the thing is what i will say about this book is even though i rated it four stars because i had a good time reading it and i do base my ratings on how much like i enjoy reading the book um the concept like of the book isn't original it's not an original concept of the book it's very much like many other dystopian fantasy books that are around there are a lot of elements to this, of this book that have clearly been inspired by the Hunger Games, you know. There's the contestants being interviewed in, like, very outlandish ways with 
bright hair and you know stuff like that which is like got clear inspiration from books like the hunger games the trials in it very much like the hunger games one of the trials in involves a shifting maze very much like harry potter and the goblet of fire so even though you know the plot and the premise isn't completely new i still had fun reading it i still enjoyed the tension between the two main characters Baden and kai i thought the tension was really really good i was like wanting them like dying for more so and i think it left on a like really good cliffhanger so the next book is called reckless which again like this book's called powerless elder silver has a book called powerless and she also has a book called reckless the next book in this series is called reckless um i have pre-ordered it i am going to read it i'll read it with my mum again um so i'm excited to see what happens so yeah it was fun i had a fun time i think it was probably a little bit too long you know knit towards the end i was thinking like this needs to be wrapped up kind of but i had a good time so oh, four stars it was like a four star rounded up more like a 3.75 but 3.5 3.75 but I, i've rounded it up to four because i don't do points so yeah four stars sticking on the theme of powerless um which is by the way is by lauren roberts she published a novella very recently called powerful came out this month well came out in april so i thought i will just stick with the world and read the novella i got the works exclusive edition which is stunning to be honest got the sprayed edges this i had to order this online because i have two works where i lived and both of them apparently they sold out so quickly so ordered this online and this follows payden's like best friend adina who is a kind of like a side character in powerless she has like a kind of a big role at the end and this is basically from her perspective of throughout like the book of powerless this is her perspective and what she gets up to um so i think you do definitely have to read this if you're wanting to continue with the series um unfortunately i did not enjoy this one as much i gave this two stars i just i found it a little bit boring a little bit underwhelming the mention of sticky buns was oh it was so annoying because it was mentioned like four times on every page and i just couldn't like it made it was making me angry how much sticky buns were mentioned so that was annoying and off-putting but i just don't think it kind of like offered anything new to the story really um i won't i can't really speak too much about what happens in this book because it will just spoil powerless for anybody who wants to read it because of the role that adina plays and like what her like fate becomes but this was a bit of an underwhelming little novella for me i feel like it was more of a like a cash grab if i'm being honest but i know people some people really really enjoyed it but for me it was just a bit like of the same thing like nothing new or particularly interesting really happened so that was powerful continue well i then continued with just springs and i read reckless this is my second favorite in the series i gave this one five stars again this one follows theo who is another bull rider and he is kind of like rex like not apprentice but rex kind of is like teaching him the ropes and it also follows winter who is summer's sister and i can't really say much about winter but her backstory again is something that you find out in flawless and it's kind of one of the like twists in flawless 
Nicholas. So I was so excited for Winter's story. And this um, did not disappoint at all. It's got pregnancy trope, which I don't know if I've actually read many other pregnancy trope books, but Elsa Silver did it so well. Theo is just like everything you want in a man. And it's also where the female is older than the guy, which again, you don't really get much. Like, you, the guy's always older in romance books, but in this, Winter is older than Theo. It's not like an age gap, it's not much of a, a difference, but the point still stands. And yeah, this book, honestly, oh, is so, so good. I loved it. Like, the way that I was so frustrated in some of the parts of this book, but like in a good way, like I was like on the edge of the seat, my tummy was like tensed up. ASMR. 
genuinely because like the way she says things and speaks is just like so calming and easy to understand so I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars it's my favorite like celebrity memoir that I have ever ever read or listened to um I like how she like calls certain people out she doesn't say do it like really without she doesn't really do it like mentioning names but you know who she's talking about and I like that about her and I like how she's kind of like stuck with who she is and hasn't kind of let fame or the possibility of like higher fame kind of like get to her head um, she's just nuts but I love that like her little forward is for the dreamers and the delinquents and I'm just like yeah I'm here for it I love an openly unhinged woman so I would definitely recommend this memoir for sure I then picked up another book that was on my spring TBR this is a book that I got in a very new box and that is The Threads That Bind by Kika Hatsapolalu um, this is a YA fantasy again, a beautiful edition, and this follows, so, it's set in a world where there's certain groups of people who have, like, different abilities, not everyone does, but Ayo, who was our main female character, she is Moira born, so she is able to see the threads that link together um or so you have like your fate thread which is a, th a thread linking to another person your life thread which you know self-explanatory stuff like that she's able to see all these things and she is able to cut the threads so say someone has a thread to like the love of coffee if she cut that that person would suddenly does not enjoy coffee as much if they cut a live thread the person would die um stuff like that she is then in a situation um where she is kind of like a, not attacked but i guess attacked by this person whose life threat life thread has been cut but they're still alive she, they call them the wraiths and she has to kind of like uncover the mystery of what how that's happening and why people are being attacked by these people these other people by these wraiths and she meets this guy called oh god what's his name E D Eddie I think he's called Eddie um it the spell it's spelled E D E I um who he doesn't like have any powers or anything but her fate thread is attached to him but he doesn't know that and basically they have to like find out they have to uncover this mystery. I gave this two stars because I, it, I was just bored to be honest. Um, it started off really good and I was interested but it just could, couldn't really keep my attention. I ended up like skim reading the past 50 pages just to find out what happened. Um, I didn't really like the magic system. I found it quite confusing because there were so many different groups of people with different abilities um it was quite slow moving the characters weren't like fleshed out particularly well and the supposed like romance was just a bit meh as well like there was nothing like great about the book it was just like i said it was this meh um, which is a shame because I think like the premise was really good it's just like the execution wasn't very good this again is going to be either like a duology or in a series it's a series I will be continuing I wanted to pick this up this month because I know the second book comes out soon so I wanted to see if I wanted to get it and I wanted to get like the very new edition to match this but I am unfortunately not going to be getting it which you know saves me some money um so yeah that was a little bit of a disappointment but i am so glad that i've read it so i can say that i've at least tried to get through 
probably both join. Um, again, this is another age gap. Bailey is 22, Beau is 35. Elsie Silver writes really good age gap romances, but the age gap wasn't kind of as spoken about in this, which I was fine with. Um, it probably, like, it didn't necessarily have to be an age gap romance, but I liked it all the same. And this one, it's about the same length as Reckless, but for some reason it did feel shorter. I got through it really quickly again. These are some of the easiest books I have ever read. I think what I will say is I think this wasn't as developed as the other books. Some of the bits felt not rushed, but it could have been fleshed out a little bit more. Um, the one thing I did actually like about this is that it was kind of like instant lo lo lost and I didn't mind that in this. I think with the other books being more like slow burns, a bit of an instant lost was actually quite a nice change. So even though kind of like intimacy doesn't happen till over halfway, the sexual innuendos and connotations and the tension is quite immediate. I do wish that we'd got more development from Bo. I wish that we'd seen like heard more about his background, but again, I have no complaints. I still I literally fucking love this book so much. So another four stars. I would re reread all these books. Obsessed. Love. Go read them. So yeah, that was the last book that I read. They are all the books I read. I had a, such a good time. April was so good. I loved him. Very like reading. Yeah, I was just like, I felt so motivated to read all the time. I felt like just happy to read all the time. I just, I loved it. I had, I wish every reading month was like that. So yeah, let me know if you have read any of these books. If you're going to read any of these books. And I will see you in my next video.